Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an overview as well as some benchmarks on a brand new product from Seagate. If you are familiar with Seagate, you might be aware that they are primarily a digital storage company. They usually pr uh, create products such as this hard drive right here. This is a four terabyte Seagate desktop hard drive. Um, and this is the typical 3.5 inch form factor that you might be familiar with. We're not gonna be talking about that today. But uh, maybe, I don't know how long ago, maybe two years ago, Seagate came out with this product here. This is the Seagate Momentus XT. This is known as a hybrid drive. So this uses a spinning mechanical disc inside, much like the uh, full 3.5 inch drive. And then it also has um, some NAND flash. The NAND flash is used for temporary storage, and it is also used to access frequently accessed data off of the drive, which gives it much, much faster response times. Today, we're going to be talking about the Seagate 600 series, which you can see right here. And these are not mechanical drives at all. These are SSDs, solid state drives. This is Seagate's first foray into the market. So let's take a closer look. And then I'm also going to be sharing you some benchmarks so you will know what kind of performance you can expect from the Seagate 600 series. So we have a few Seagate 600 series drives here. The code name for these drives is Wolf, which is kind of cool. Uh, but if you look at the drive here, you'll notice it has a metal housing. Uh, it's got a bit of a texture to it, Seagate logo, and a, uh, a, a bit of a bit of flair there as well. I, I like the design. I think it would fit in with most computer builds if you are looking for something that will fit in from a color perspective. Now these are, of course, high-end SSDs, so you're looking at a SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second interface. Uh, and you also have some internals, which I'll be coming back to in just a moment because this drive on the right has actually been disassembled. Now if you do get one of these drives and you want to take it apart, I'd recommend not doing that because they're actually assembled quite well. Uh, I have a disassembled version here so I can show you the internals, uh, but it's not the kind of drive that you actually want to pop open. Um, they're just constructed in such a way that you might actually damage the drive, so please uh, try not to do that if you can avoid it. As far as capacities goes, uh, I have the 480 gig version right here, as you may be able to see. It's also available in 240 gigs and 120 gigs. And this is also the 7 millimeter Z height, or height which you might also say. So seven millimeters tall, so it should fit in most uh, Ultrabooks or laptops if you do have a 2.5 inch drive bay available in there. Uh, sometimes you can be uh, height limited, uh, but there's also a five millimeter version. So one that's even, even skinnier than this one available. Uh, so if you do have something like an Ultrabook perhaps, or a slimmer laptop, you might uh, opt for one of these to fit within that. Uh, next up, why don't I go ahead, well actually finish off the uh, roundabout of the drive itself with a look at the connectors right there. Again, SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabits per second. Make sure you're connecting to that type of connection on your computer. If you want to uh, get the most out of the drive, you will definitely be bottlenecking this drive if you go with the SATA Rev 2, 3 gigabits per second connection. So of course you have the data connector right there as well as the power connector right next to it. All right, now again, this drive has been pre-disassembled, which is why it just fell apart when I picked it up. Uh, you simply have a metal uh, back plate right there. That's got the logos on it. Here's a look at the inside of the shell, pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty much open except for a little bit of a contact point. There's actually will be a uh, heat pad or thermal pad between this section of the drive and your controller right there because that's one of the uh, hotter components just to make sure that stays cool. Uh, but when it comes to the internals here, you'll notice a few different components that I can point out to you. First off, you got the controller. That's the square chip that you see right there. It's a Link A media controller. And then you have all of your NAND right below it. Now, this being the 480 gig version, you have eight die per package on the NAND. Uh, if you have the 240 gig version, you'll have four die per package. And if you go with the 120 gig, you'll have two die per package. Uh, and you will have roughly equivalent speeds on the 480 and 240 gig version. And then uh, 120, you'll see slightly less, um, but still very good performance uh, comparable with most uh, SATA Rev 3, uh, six gigabit per second drives. Uh, next up, the NAND itself is actually made by Toshiba. It's Toshiba Toggle 2 NAND, 19 nanometer. Uh, it's MLC, so you have two bits per cell, and that is synchronous NAND flash. So very fast, fast memory, and that's uh, going hand in hand with the Link A Media controller, which does a very good job at making sure that the drive is performing at peak speeds. Also, you have a couple uh, uh, DDR RAM chips right there, and that is uh, simply to uh, do some caching on the fly for the drive. Let's look at the back, not much to see there. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some benchmarks. So here's a quick look at the system I'm using to benchmark this drive. It's based on an Intel Core i5-3570K processor. We're using an ASUS Maximus 5G motherboard. That's a Z77 chipset, and we are connected to the peripheral controller hub that's integrated into the Z77 chipset. So that's your NADA, native SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second uh, connector, as you can see right there, SATA transfer rate 6 gig gigabits 
per second. Also, our memory, which is clocked at 2666, uh, that's some G-Skill tried NX. I know it's pretty fast for memory, but what are you going to do? Uh, let's move on right away to our ASSSD benchmarks, and I'm going to jump to the overall benchmark first before we look at the, the secondary ones. So here's a single test. Uh, we're looking at megabytes per second on the left, at input-output operations per second on the right. Uh, ASSSD tends to be uh, pretty, pretty fierce when it comes to the SSD benchmarks. Um, so you won't always see the maximum performance, but this definitely does a really good job of giving you an overall score, which is great. Also, you can see access time. So sequential reads, about 510 megabytes per second. Sequential writes, about 435 megabytes per second. Also, pay attention as we go along to the 4K values, because when you're using your computer on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you will be doing 4K reads and writes much, much more frequently than you do sequential reads and writes unless you constantly copy huge files back and forth, which we do a lot because we do video editing, but I digress. Access time, less than 0.1 milliseconds for both reads and writes, very impressive. Overall score, again, uh, very impressive, of 1107. So if you guys want to do some comparisons, you can check out other videos we've done on SSDs if you want to go back and forth to check comparative benchmarks. We also have the copy benchmark right here, and uh, we got speeds of about 370 megabytes per second for ISO. 206 megabytes per second for programs and 285 megabytes per second per, for games. This is a synthetic test, but it's just uh, synthesizing some sort of standard use case scenarios to see what the performance is. We also have a compression benchmark. Uh, note that the, uh, the uh, Link A Media controller does not do compression on the fly, so you see pretty much consistent uh, performance across the board, whether you're talking about 0% compression all the way up to 100% compression. It's all for AS SSD. Next, we have Atto. And Atto is one that, uh, if you look at an SSD and the specs that are uh, emblazoned across the front of the retail box, chances are the manufacturer used Atto to achieve those numbers. So if you want to see if you can duplicate them, well, just download Atto and try it out. I run it at two Q depths. So I try Q depth of four. And the even Q depth of four is probably more than you'll ever see with a typical home use system. Um, but there you have it. Uh, you have a bunch of different transfer, transfer sizes tested from 0.5 kilobytes all the way up to about 8 megabytes. And as you can see, as you get into larger transfer sizes, your performance improves. Topping out in these tests at about 474 megabytes per second on the writes, and at about, sorry, let me move the little hand, and at about uh, 555 megabytes per second on the reads, which is some some very impressive performance again. Uh, here's it run at Q-Depth 10, and I was mentioning what manufacturers like to use. Manufacturers like to use Atto, and they like to use it at Q-Depth of 10. So you might see a little bit higher numbers here when you're giving the uh, SSD more data to work with and a, a longer Q-Depth so that it has more data that it's ready to access when it finishes doing whatever command it's currently on. We topped out at about 557 here for the reads, and about, once again, around 470, 475 mark for the rates. That's all for Atto. And then we have disk speed test. This is from Blackmagic Design. Let me make it bigger. There we go. Uh, and this is uh, essentially a test that will look at uh, video performance. So whether you're talking about lots of different video formats, lots of different video color depths, and it's looking at the drive and it's saying, is this drive capable of handling this type of video if you're going to be doing video editing? As you can see, we have lots and lots of green check marks there. It's able to uh, handle most types of video that you would have in a, in a home use scenario. Of course, once you get up to 2K, and once you get into uh, more intense color depth, such as the 10-bit RGB and 12-bit RGB, uh, it might have a little bit harder time working with that. But honestly, if you're working with that type of video, you should probably be going with more than just a single SSD for your storage configuration. Finally, we have the ever-popular Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, this is a great test because it's free to download, and you can try it out. Again, here we're going to see similar results to the AS SSD. Uh, this is actually in compressible mode. Uh, again, this drive does not feature compression, so I'm going to jump over to our non-compressible mode. This is the default. 524 megabytes per second on the reads, 468 megabytes per second on the writes. Again, really good 4K performance, about 30 megabytes per second and 108 megabytes per second, respectively, for reads and writes. And then down here at the bottom, we can see input-output operations per second. And I'm actually seeing 10 to 15,000 more uh, input-output operations per second than what Seagate is claiming for this drive. So I really like that. Seagate is, uh, is actually claiming a little bit less than what this drive can actually achieve. So for, with our random read 4K, QDEPTH 32 test, 91,000 IOPS. Random write 4K, QDEPTH 32, 86,000 IOPS. Again, really, really impressive performance.
So there you have it, folks, some benchmark numbers from our Seagate 600 series SSD, some very impressive performance. And if you're in the market for an SSD, this is definitely, definitely an excellent candidate. Once again, it's available in 120 gigabyte, 248 gigabyte, as well as 480 gigabyte varieties, also available in the uh, seven millimeter as well as the five millimeter height. So check out if you need uh, the slimmer one, especially if you're going for an Ultrabook or something like that. Uh, and also bear in mind our benchmark numbers we saw were for the 480 gigabyte version. Those should be roughly comparable to the 240 gigabyte version, and you'll see slightly uh, lower write speeds if you're going with the 120 gigabyte version just due to the way the NAND packages are configured in the drive. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you found it useful. We'll see you all next time on Newegg TV.